first of all let me say that uh, this is a very important topic this topic was as apt 20 years back and when business world is going to do this kind of a event 20 years after this subject of leadership will remain as such what kind of qualities should be there in a leaders to run the organizations you know the other thing what we have discussed is the happiness many a times happiness and convenience we get confused in it may be a convenient thing but you still may not be very happy on that you know years back when i used to work for a company i would say retention rate was almost 99.9 and that time initially we brought gym in the office grocery shops in the office everybody was picked up dropped but those kind of things today will not make the employees happy their expectations are different you know so i would say that the things are changing very fast in a digital marketing world uh in a uh how do i say artificial intelligence which is coming uh, things will be very very difficult you know one mistake in your digital marketing can put your shares of the company down okay one statement can create those problems in a your glass door when the employees leave you know? so the tomorrow ceos will have to be very knowledgeable in terms of digital marketing artificial intelligence and how to make people very happy and i was talking to one of the colleagues here who made a very nice presentation and he asked him what are the qualities required in a tomorrow ceos the first thing what he mentioned was listening if the seniors cannot listen then it becomes very difficult you know to translate and to find a solution second is what he said is the wholesome you can't say i only know the sales or marketing or hr in order to run an organization at that level you have to have the information and knowledge in every field so that you can have a proper 360 view view so that you can give solutions you know uh, i would say that um, in different stages and different organizations happiness level may be a different though it is a one word you know when you give somebody a leave in one place it may be possible to give a leave in other place it may not be possible to give a leave and you will have to compensate differently anyway i leave it to my colleagues here they are the expert in their own field and would ask you to on the subject itself if you can tell us what will be the leadership requirements in the future and as and how they are different from today you know thank you sir for uh, sharing your thoughts uh, good afternoon uh, dear colleagues my name is abhishek i uh, represent an organization called eli lilly and company i was happy to uh, hear some of the fellow colleagues from pharmaceutical industry so it's a pharmaceutical organization having a presence in both uh, uh, as a capability center in bangalore as well as we have a sales and marketing uh, affiliate based out of in gurgaon now uh, when this topic was uh, Uh, presented uh, to us for the discussion over here i think we all have seen a change in terms of our own leadership approach particularly in last two years i myself have uh, seen that approach in my own leadership style because uh, in 2019 we were around uh, 400 people in bangalore today as we speak we are close to uh, 2500 people so as covid was picking up we were also picking up our hiring numbers and we almost uh, uh, kind of five uh, yeah we grew our organization by almost five times now when uh, we saw that we exactly saw a real combination of the one the uh, new age expectations in terms of flexibility in terms of uh, being a tech enabled organization in terms of being more uh, uh, having access to the leadership being more uh, resilient and adaptive management now when we look at uh, on the other side which is talking to what the leader should be doing i think the first and foremost thing and uh, uh, i saw some of our colleagues talking about is that uh, the open and transparent culture so you talked about listening i think uh, communication is the key the third is uh, making sure that we are not using our positional power rather than we are uh, uh, using our personal power 
to influence the organization. And the last I would like to add, and this is something I pick up from the Marcel Goldsmith coaching uh, style, is uh, the display of courage, humility, and discipline coupled with uh, care and empathy. So that is something that I would think uh, the, all the leaders need to exhibit and continue to exhibit to win the confidence of employees. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anika, and I represent Lowe's, uh, the GCC of Lowe's, which is actually based out of Bangalore. We're about eight years old, uh, and we're part of Lowe's Incorporated, which is you know the US's second largest home improvement retailer, a Fortune 35 company. Um, you know, as you mentioned, and as you said, uh, Mr. Abhishek, absolutely. You know, I totally second and echo what you're saying. And I think all of us as leaders, we're leaders in our own capacities. But I think truly what we're looking at here is the CXO level. And I think it really goes beyond the business acumen and driving productivity and, you know, making sure people are doing what they need to do and the organization is doing what they need to do. But what is really the new frontier here for the CXOs really is that humanness that really comes into the equation. You know, how are we also being agile, especially in such a, you know, in such a VUCA world, such a, such a bubbly and volatile world that we are today, especially with the pandemic, agile, adaptable and flexible in everything that we're doing. And of course, as a lot of my esteemed, you know, esteemed colleagues and speakers here have said is really connecting people to the purpose of the organization, you know, driving activation versus just engagement and really being catalysts for change and transformation. I think in today's day and age, everything, you know, decision making has to be fast. It has to be quick. Uh, leaders are definitely decisive. But along with empathy is what is important, really, in terms of, you know, connecting back uh, to talent. And that's really what builds companies. It's people today that builds companies and not really losing sight uh, of that. So I would, I think, stress def definitely on the empathy and the connection that we need to make. And it's really a top-down approach. If, it if we get it right at the executive level and at the CXO level, it's the top-down approach that matters, uh, finally. Thanks very much. Can you tell me one thing in terms of the qualities of CXO today and what will be in future, let's say, down the line, five years, 10 years? Let me repeat my question. You know. Anything different, what CXOs are having qualities, what they will be having different after five years and 10 years? You know? Okay. Okay. I think the difference between what it was in the past versus possibly today and in the future is being more facilitators than enforcers, you know, being able to facilitate the change, facilitate dialogue, facilitate the essence and the culture of an organization versus enforcing and directing it. So Excellent. I, I would, I, that, that is the one thing that comes to my mind. Your comments, sir. <laughs> Uh, you want me to answer this question or shall I you can start, start from the beginning? Okay. You know. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Anil and I represent uh, Geomart uh, Reliance, relatively new to Reliance world, but otherwise, yeah, I've been in HR for quite some time now. Uh, before I get into the theme, broad five trends is what, you know, I would like to highlight what's changing all around us. Once we know, okay, this is the problem statement, this is the starting point, then probably life becomes easier for all of us. With that premise, let me try and talk about first point, which already Harsh talked about. Number one, workplace flexibility. Very recently experienced all of us because of the COVID. It has forced us to change uh, our, our ways of working and workplaces have become much more flexible, right? And hence, uh, our ways of working, especially in HR and people management, also needed to go through plenty of changes. That's one thing which we all have seen. Now, work from home, work from anywhere. I don't need to get into those details. We all are aware. Number two, uh, we talked about the new kids on the block. It's no longer Gen Yers. We talked about Gen Z. All the people born after 1995, by and large, today, my business has got 39,000 people. But if you look at the average age, uh, then, you know, it hovers around 29 and 30, not more than that. Now, what is different? Uh, uh, pardon me if I'm sounding, uh, I'm stereotyping. I'm not trying to do that. But by and large, uh, there are some inherent qualities 
which is quite unique with those young people so to what extent i think behave act like one of the gen z yeah is very very important to connect yeah probably through that i can bring in the much required element of happiness number 3 often the previous speaker also uh, uh, talked about uh, technology when we are talking about industrial revolution 4.0 and klaus swab the foundation chairman talks about augmented reality how the future is all about technology and hence we need to embrace technology but to my mind there are two important elements one is high tech the other one is high touch it's no longer tech or touch it's both it's not versus ability of a cho to influence and bring a change would depend largely on how well i know how to balance high tech and high touch right you would not like a chatbot or a robot coming and wishing you on your birthday yeah okay uh, there are certain thing which is irreplaceable and human touch hence would become always important fourth one one trend that we are also seeing right now is about uh, our gig economy whenever there is a crisis it puts tremendous pressure on our ways of doing business and more specifically cost now how do i as a chro make sure that i have those required support in terms of headcount but at the same time i control the cost it cannot be done only through fte or full time employee route i need to have part timers i need to have gig economy uh, gig workers by the way as a nation we are third uh, already out of the top 5 countries after us and china we are third then comes japan and mexico and so on and so forth some other time maybe we will talk about that uh, but as a chro i need to have the ability to smell and find out which are the changes happening all around us and quickly need to adapt and cater to the business if that happens probably that is happiness for uh, the business leaders that is happiness for ceo when we talk about young people understanding what excites them at work okay it's no longer rongoli competition or kite flying employee engagement how about a dating allowance or give me movie tickets probably that is fun at work for them to what extent i go there and say that hey you know what i've been uh, organizing kite flying so it works well so it will work well for you 29 years old also does not work that way so one critical element is how fast i can get the signals reorient rebaseline my ways of working and then if i go back to my stakeholders that would be the true service i would be rendering as a csr thanks very much very well explained sanjay welcome uh, your initial thoughts on the leadership for the new age sorry come again i'm sorry uh, for being late first of all i got stuck in a traffic sorry but can you just please repeat the question i said you share your initial views on the leadership thoughts for the new age what kind of qualities qualifications traits cxos leader should have in the new age uh hi everyone my name is sanjay and i represent uh, hero fincorp i heads the hr for a retail finance business uh we do captive financing for hero motor corp so we are a group company uh with respect to the topic uh there are two three things which is very important which i feel it one is that how do you have a disturbance a disruptive mindset yeah we have been doing certain things with lot of traditional or it's been outdated now so if you have to take a next move i think covid is one of the thing in which lot of us actually break the different ways of working being it uh, mental mental we- mental well being mindset and all the stuff but the important piece is that how do we ensure or come up with the new innovations where we make the disturbance in the market that's always a key for us that we have seen through it and that's what we have been doing it that's one piece second is having a self awareness whatever that you become you need to be humble and you need to have a self awareness what you are doing it which should be aligned to your core values i think as a organization we have grown many folds into different uh, line of businesses and products but i think the one thing which is a key for us as an organization always been the values 
we have never compromised on our values we will be moving to a festive season in india the great billion festival days are coming as amazon says it's also very a strong festive season for us for all banks and bfcs and especially for hero motocorp in hero fincorp we will be going all out there are a lot of things happening on the ground across dealerships in three, in 30000 pin codes the only idea is that how do we stay connected to our core values and the values never change for us profitability cost all those things will be hap- all those things are there and they will continue to be there my important piece is how do we ensure that we are connected to the people how do we ensure that quality is happening how are we ensuring that our customer is first sales is not first how do we ensure that our customer is first so these are the few thing that we are focusing i have associated with this organization for almost 8 9 years now and i have not seen the change in the value system uh, especially in, the, in 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 front of the promoters so that's very critical and i would say that we should always align to the values the people part i think that will drive us the trust integrity in different organization different values are there but if you are aligning to the core values as a human being i think definitely will able to achieve we are not here for a sprint we are here for a marathon that's what we tell our people and we want to create a institution not a a, a one time kind of a stuff so from that perspective i would say we should always align to our core values that will help us to achieve and reach where we want to be as a human or as a professional thank you thanks very much well explain one thing very uh, important you mentioned about the touch point we certainly wouldn't like uh, robots to come and wish us on the birthdays and all that you know so okay keeping up the technology can be overwhelming every day there are new things are happening you know do you think senior le- leaders should support reverse mentoring because they may not been having that much of knowledge so do you think that reverse mentoring is going to work in the technology field for the seniors i i 100% echo that thank you for asking that sir i think rever- today the uh, generation that is that i am myself i am witnessing that in the organization that the people and the adaptability with the technology that they have uh, i don't think i can ever go there but uh, what hinders me or maybe sometime the thought is my own uh, self imposed ego or the perception that may be formed with the colleagues there that uh, oh he is doing reverse mentoring or he is talking to people so just setting that and getting the thoughts from our colleagues it has helped me so much in getting to know not only about technology but also about their thought process also about how exactly what they want from the leaders so it helps in uh, various ways and we have actually adopted it as a one of the practice for appointing a gen y or gen g whatever we say as one of the individual for all the senior leader uh, senior leaders one mentor uh, one person who would be doing the reverse mentoring for all the leadership in our organization so it's it's uh, i am i'm a big fan of it very nice you know yeah, i i know times up but i just wanted a minute and you know i i too agree that reverse mentoring is a great way to really bridge the gap between the tenure and the experience that cxos come with versus what's really happening on the ground reality you know and i don't know if it has to be a real formal program but possibly in a way more you know inorganic or rather organic in the way it kind of it kind of matures so let me say one thing imagine there's a company and it builds a great product you know and it's something that customer they feel customers would like but a real but the new age talent or a millennial would really know how the on instagram we see unboxing videos i don't know if you know a lot of instagrammers have seen unboxing new products and at least the new age would know that right but how that unboxing video and how that influencer who is doing the unboxing video is really making or breaking the perception of that product right so it's really how we upward kind of there's a there's a there's a there's a different way of learning and i also feel with reverse mentoring is what you're doing is really instilling confidence and that value impact back to you know the folks on the ground that the cxos and that that top level management can really start instilling and builds that pipeline as well so you know just a couple of points on that excellent you know very nicely explained your views yeah reverse mentoring sounds very trendy and you know very that's a technical jargon but you know i don't believe in that 
uh, to my mind okay what do you mean by reverse mentoring okay you are good at something and i am good at certain something let's build a task force you help me out individual it's always a debate about individual brilliance versus ability to take people along whosoever is good irrespective of age uh, why don't we collaborate and help each other and ultimately without losing focus on the top point yeah in that context it's fancy to use reverse mentoring in our unconscious mind it already happens we don't realize there are plenty of things as rightly said we pick it up from our uh, children and that happens you uh, know unconsciously so learning should never stop focus should never be missed does not matter if uh, you are a little more tenured i am little more younger uh, uh, or are otherwise if you are good at something meritocracy driven organizations let's collaborate and work together rest all jargons are good to uh, be discussed in a forum like this okay uh, when we say uh, leadership and when we say new age leaders will age matter because nowadays unicorns i would say from my own institute 25% of the country's unicorn are from there and the age of the people is only around not more than 32 33 years average age so when we say earlier uh, you will only become a director when you are 50 years old you will become a ceo when you are 45 years old today for future leaders does age matter or let me say ex- that kind of experience matters in so you would have uh... heard the uh, comments from the uh, ceo of zepto he is if i am not wrong he is i think around 20 or 22 years old and the way his my own cfo he was telling me that when he heard him speaking in one of the conference it looked like that he is as if he has gained experience of 50 years so i think uh, i am not sure and we have numerous example of that whether we look at and our we are proud of our own uh, ecosystem of the startup so when you look at ola when you look at oyo when we look at us toil flipkart and all that i don't think everywhere experience only matters it is also the uh, i think during the course of journey the risk taking ability the uh, zeal to do more the innovation uh, uh, driven approach and also the i would say something new the desire to do something new and break the uh, 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 chain or break the uh, rule that could help people uh, uh, do well i'm not sure i'm not uh, 100% confident that experience is always required to uh, reach to these levels that's my personal thought yeah. okay. yes age is very important now which age you are talking about mental age or physiological age yeah uh, mental age has nothing to do with how many years i have been practicing hr and how been how many years i have been in a position now that was on the lighter side on its more serious note in a value based driven culture in a meritocracy driven culture what matters is what has been my net value addition to the company it has nothing to do with uh um, my age and if i am capable enough by all means you know that is assessed uh, then you know let's go ahead does not matter actually you know what is my physiological age uh, by all means you know that ceo uh, title should come to me if i am capable enough Thanks, i demonstrated that this is very encouraging especially for me coming from a chr or saying that the physical age doesn't matter you know so it's fine uh you uh, i work with a company called csc it's called uh, i don't want to confuse there are other csc companies in india as well it's called contemporary service corporation usa this company is into crowd management and they use a lot of technology crowd management what i mean is that uh, uh, they manage olympics us presidential inaugurations and fifa cups and many others you know so a lot of young people are there in terms of because of the technology etc but you are right in terms of uh, but still when it comes to hiring the people when a lot of other people are available i would tend to agree that uh, experience uh, and the knowledge and the today's uh, i in, uh, artificial intelligence and other things are equally important so i would say thank you very much it has been a very uh, learning experience from all of you and some of the encouraging statements have also come in and uh, thank you for your patience you know thank you thank you